Good morning, everyone. My name is Michelle Morris, and I work in the Center for Communication. I've been working with Christina Cho, who's our other uh, presenter here. Christina is our, our conference videographer, and, uh, and she and I work on a lot of different clips. Uh, we've done promos together, and we've done a lot of the courses for course together, and uh, so we've had and we, and we and she helped me work on my videos for my book, which launches apparently next week. Um, and so we've done a lot of work together and she's taught me a lot about video skills. And so I thought this would be a great opportunity for us to share um, her knowledge with y'all. And um, and hopefully this will be helpful. I'm going to give you a little bit of an idea of what we're going to be covering today. We are going to, Christina's going to talk through equipment that's useful for video shooting, um, how to set a scene. Um, basics on lighting, basics on sound. Then she's going to demonstrate some simple editing skills for us, and I'm going to share in conversation on that since um, I, she's taught me much about editing skills, so I'm much more of, a, of an amateur than she is. So if I have questions, I will throw those in, and if y'all have questions, uh, share those with us as well. We'll bring them up. She's going to talk about how to export a video, some creative ideas in videoing, and then um, if there's time, I have some 12 tips of, from a book called How to Shoot Video That Doesn't Suck that I'll share with you. We are going to honor your one hour time frame. Um, so at that, the, all that material will probably take an hour, but we will stay behind and, and have a frequently asked questions space where you can ask us questions. And then if you want to stay a little longer, I will demonstrate another video editing software tool uh, to give you an idea of two different options and also to show you that pastors can do this too um, so that you can see that these are skills that you can pick up. So that's what we're going to do uh, in the course of this webinar. I do want to just take a note and say that we all recognize that our lives have been disrupted, that our understanding of ministry has been disrupt disrupted, and that our plans for this season have definitely been disrupted. But we now have an opportunity to think differently about seasons like Easter and to really think creatively about how we're going to bring the Easter message, not just to our people, but to really anybody around the world. Um, this kind of technology can, re can have a, a tremendous reach. So I want us, as we're showing you these basic video skills, start thinking in creative terms of what you're going to be able to do to bring Easter, to bring um, any number of seasons. Once you've learned these skills, you're going to be able to use this kind of technology to integrate into your live um, weekly worship as well. Um, so I'm excited for what, what is before us right now. We're happy to be here as a resource. To um, I, I would love to brainstorm with some of you all about your plans for Easter. That would be exciting for me. Um, just think in terms of you're going to get to storyboard Easter out and what that means. And hopefully what we learned from the webinar today will, will give you some of those skills. So that being said, I'm going to now turn things over to Christina and she's going to take us through some of these uh, technical aspects um, that we need to learn. So Christina. Okay. All right. Thanks Michelle. Okay. I guess I will start sharing my screen. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Alrighty, so um, as Michelle said, I will be covering um, a lot of kind of like the basic um, aspects of video filming and editing. Um, first, I'm going to start off with um, talking about kind of your the options that you have um, equipment wise. So let me get this started. Okay, so the most simplest tool um, you can use is your phone. Um, you know, you can, it's probably the one that everyone is most familiar with. Um, so it's definitely the easiest you can use, but it's probably um, best to only use it for very quick and um, short videos because you're going to be limited by your phone storage. So every phone has like a storage capacity. And as you can see, it does take a lot of storage um, out of your phone. Um, with iPhones in particular, you're going to have to be careful with the video format. Um, and because based on which computer you're going to use to edit the footage, um, you'll have to set it to the right format. So as you can see, if you go into your settings and into camera, you're going to um, pick you know, the right video format um, to film in. And if you're going to film um, on your phone for a good length of time, I would su suggest um, getting a tripod um, meant for films. 
just to for those of you who are wondering about format it's the it's the little no, um, numbers and letters at the end of a file that you save like when you have when you save a document form and it ends in docx um you you the videos do the same thing like they save an mp4 or um, mov that sort of thing mp4 if you can get it to save in an mp4 that's the most universal one right christina yeah that's what it, um it means by uh um most compatible so yeah and to uh just just so you know, um, if you do have to use the most compatible format on your iPhone, it is going to take a little bit more memory than the high efficiency one. Um, okay, so now to talk about the difference between camcorder and digital cameras. So both of them require SD cards. Um, and so if your computer does not have an SD card input, you might need to get a USB adapter in order for you to view the footage on your computer. Um, kind of the two main differences between digital cameras and camcorders. Digital cameras um, are, can only record about 30 minutes at a time. If you try to record any longer than that, it's going to overheat and just shut down. Um, camcorders, on the other hand, can record for longer periods of time. Um, but, you know, again, your SD card is going to dictate about how much video you can um, film and so on. Um, Digital cameras also have a higher video quality. That's because that they have um, better sensors than camcorders. And so they are able to capture better in low light and they will have better fine tuning of your typical camera functions when it comes to exposure, color balance, um, and focus. Okay. And so Mevo cameras, um, it's the camera that the conference is um, distributing as part of its tech grants. It is it works pretty much like a camcorder. Um, the only difference is that it uses a micro SD card. So in order for you to import your footage onto your computer, you'll probably need to get an SD card adapter. Um, and you will have to control the camera using a mobile app, which we will have to download on your phone or on a tablet. Okay, so now I'll talk about audio, um, audio equipment. So you can record, um, audio on you know your camera device as well but we don't really recommend it because it is not of high quality and so there are two types of mics you could possibly use you can use a lavalier lavalier mic or a lav mic it's the tiny one that you can clip onto a person um, and depending on how you have it set up your person will have a bit more mobility um, to walk around but you will have to be careful with noise um, if your mic rubs on your clothes or you accidentally pound your chest it's going to pick up that noise pretty well. You can use a shotgun mic, which is an, um, which you can see on the slide. Um, it picks up sound in one direction, so it means that your talent is going to have to stay in front of the mic unless you're able to move the mic around at the same time. Um, there are different ways you can connect your mic. Um, so first, you can have it um, just connected directly into your camera. Um, but you'll have to check what inputs are available for your camera. You might need to get additional um, cable adapters in order for you to connect them. Um, you can use an audio recorder. They're usually small handheld devices. So if you're going to use a lav mic, then you can, um, you know, connect it to the audio recorder and like pocket it if you like. Um, your phone also has a voice recording app. And so, you know, if you connect your mic, then you just open the app and you can press record. Okay. And do take note if you're if you're if you're wanting to put a mic into your into your iPhone, they don't have aux adapters anymore. Um, so a lot of times you need a Bluetooth adapter in order for those to to communicate with each other. Yes. Okay. Um, so additional things to consider. So you know each device is going to have their own battery recording and quality capacity. Um, and so you have to consider, you know, uh, the kind of video, like how long you want to film and, you know, think about all those factors accordingly. Um, the higher video quality is going to require more memory space and battery life. So uh, what I mean by memory space is you're going to probably need to get bigger SD cards. Um, you will have to make sure that your computer has enough space in order to kind of host that footage. And it's going to require more time to process when you're importing your footage onto your computer while you're editing and when you're uploading um, onto a video platform. And your internet speed will also affect the time it's going to take to upload video and the resolution that your audience is going to be able to, uh, be able to see will be affected by speed as well. 
So um, there's been a lot of comments about um, what to record in and people have said, can't put, shouldn't we record in 720? You can. Um, we tend to, to load ours actually in 1080. Um, and, and for those of you who don't know about these speeds, these are, these are different speeds and we'll show some of that um, when we're editing, but um, we tend to say 1080. Now the, the point is that your, your congregants may not be able to pull a video at that size. YouTube has an automatic filter. So if you're loading to YouTube, YouTube will read the speed on the other end and adjust the quality automatically. So that's why we tend to load in 1080 um, actually, sometimes we load in 4K, but that takes a long time and a lot of memory. But we tend to load in 1080 because if someone cannot handle that speed, YouTube will automatically filter it down. So that allows folks with good quality to um, to still uh, see it in good quality, and it allows those uh, with lower quality, they'll see it'll pull it down for them. Okay? Right now we're going to move on to talking about lighting. Um, and so it is really important that you get good lighting um, and it can go both ways. You can have not enough light, which causes a, um, it's what we call noise in video. Um, it's kind of this grainy texture. I'll be able to show you an example of what noise looks like a little bit later. Or you can have too much light, which causes an overexposure and you will not you'll lose a lot of detail in your subject and, you know, background and things like that. So I know not everybody might not have access to studio lights, but lamps could be a good substitute. The thing you'll have to be kind of careful with is that lamps, because they're not meant to kind of diffuse and like soften light, it could be cause cast very harsh lighting, you know, very contrasty. And so a lot of this is going to have to be your own kind of experiment, experimentation and trial and error to make sure that you can make a good light setup. Um, some additional things you could use as light sources, like the ambient lights around your house, like ceiling lights are okay. Um, I would suggest shooting during the day, um, if possible. You can use natural light if you want to use like a window, but you have to consider that, you know, the weather changes and the time of day can affect how much light you have. And you don't want to kind of end up like, um, you know, in the middle of filming and suddenly you lose your light source. So. Um, and so the main kind of like standard way um, studio filming is done is a three point light setup. And so you have three lights. Um, you have first your key light, which is the one that is kind of basically the main light, the, the light that casts um, the most on the subject. And it's the one that's closest to the light. And as you can see in the diagram, it's kind of pointed at a 45 degree angle. Then you have a fill light, which is kind of stands opposite from the key light, and it's a little bit dimmer, and it's basically there to kind of cancel the shadow that is created from the key light. And then you have a backlight, which sits behind your subject, and it kind of highlights the subject, and so it kind of helps them to give a separation from them in the background. Um, as you can see in the uh, kind of the um, illustration below, or picture below, you can see kind of how the three, um, lights kind of work together to create, you know, a well-lit subject. Um, I understand that not everyone might not have enough lights. And so I would say if you need to really focus on a light, then you should um, make sure that you have a key light and a fill light. Um, also, you probably, you may need some additional light uh, behind you up to light up your background. All right. Um, so, I, yeah, I think I kind of addressed this a little bit before about overexposure and underexposure. Um, I will say kind of a general rule, it's better to be underexposed than overexposed because you have a bit more option to fix it in the editing stage. In most editing software, there is a place for you to kind of increase the brightness um, of your footage. People with glasses, um, I don't know, you can see, but I have a bit of glare in my glasses right now. And you will try to want to avoid getting glare because it kind of obscures, you know, people's view of you. Um, and so, again, it's gonna take a little bit of experimentation to make sure you get the lighting right, but generally, if you raise your lights a little bit higher, then you can kind of avoid most glares. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit more technical because it's kind of important to know, especially with digital cameras. So if, if anyone's familiar with photography, there are three elements um, that, uh, that, that work, um, three elements that, um, affect the exposure. So there's aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. Because we're working with video, you have to keep your shutter speed at um, 
consistent at the frame rate that you're setting it at. Um, and so if you're saying, if you're gonna, if your camera is gonna shoot 24 frames per second, then you have to keep the shutter speed at one over 48. Um, yeah, so um, if you only have like your aperture and ISO to work with, ISO is um, a way for the camera to like artificially increase its exposure, but every camera has a different tolerance for how much ISO you can increase it. The cameras that I use with the conference has a pretty large range of ISO, and so I can kind of increase it to like pretty high. And um, so that's just something that you're just going to have to kind of play around with your camera, get familiar with, um, in order to understand what is the best exposure set. Um, so this is just kind of a visual to show you how kind of ISO works. So as you can see, the higher the ISO, the more exposure it gets. Um, and you want to keep your ISO actually number as low as possible because it does affect the quality of the video, which I will show in a little bit. But here's just kind of to show you, you know, here's something that's underexposed when it's correctly exposed and over overexposed. Um, you can see that um, it's you can start to see the overexposure when you see like changes in color, when you start to lose detail in your um, subject. And um, um, I would say like, you know, 800 is still pretty decent. I probably needed a bit more light in my background, but you know, you there is kind of room for what is correctly exposed. You don't have to uh, think that ISO 400 is the you know automatically correct one. It is going to depend on how much light you have and um, you know what is available, I guess. Okay, so I'm gonna take a moment to kind of explain about noise and I have some kind of sample footage to show. Um, if I can, yeah, get this up. So this is a bit of video that I took with, again, with the toy car and I shot this in very low ISO. Um, so it is, you know, very dark and if you can see a little bit in kind of this dark area, there's kind of like this fuzzy kind of like flickering of color. So this doesn't have that much noise. Um, but when I took um, the same video, but all I did was increase the ISO significantly, so it looks like it's well exposed. But if I play the video, you can see there's a lot of flickering of color. This is what we call noise. And this is kind of what um, happens if you try to increase your ISO too much or you don't have enough light in your footage. So I'm trying to stress the importance of having good lighting to kind of be able to have, you know, make decent quality, uh, quality of your video. Christina, um, there's a, been a question. If, they, if someone only has an iPad that they're working with, do they have any of these setting adjustments and settings? Like, can they, can they adjust their ISO or any of that? Or are they, they just basically going to need to work with external things? Like, um, if they need to increase the light, they need to turn on another lamp. I think so. Um, I don't, I have never really seen ISO settings. So this is kind of mainly for camcorders and um, digital cameras. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, Kathy, so what I answered in, in, in your question is tr if you don't have those kind of adjustments, if you are working with just an iPhone or an iPad, then, then do as much as you can with, with the stuff around you and, um, and make the best do. I mean, we're just going to have to be a little creative in this space, right? We're going to have to be a little bit adaptive and not every video is going to be the best video we've ever shot, but at least hopefully this can help a little bit. Okay, now back to presentation. Okay, all right, so now I'm going to move on and talking about how to make a good set. So an ideal place would be just any space that's quite open and has little noise interference. You wanna avoid having um, a space that you can hear like the air conditioning or fans that could be picked up by your mic. Um, you wanna think about the content of your video and like find an appropriate place and try to use it consistently. I imagine many of you are going to be creating like a video series where you're gonna be um, making a weekly video and it would be best for your audience to like kind of familiarize and like um, understand the purpose if you can film in the same place and same set. Um, what I think about what um, what would be a good era to make a set, I kind of think like less is more. Don't have anything too di distracting in frame, nothing like moving or like crazy with bright lights. Um, 
but also feel free to kind of make it homey like you can you know add intentional like decorations and props and I imagine you're a lot of you are going to have to make a lot of videos so make it a space that is comfortable okay so framing and composition um, in cinema, there is um, something we call we have called the rule of thirds. So if you are to um, divide up your frame into thirds, then the key element should line go along with the line. So as you can see with these, um, I think shots from Jurassic Park. Am I right? <laughs> um, <but> yeah. <laughs> um, you can see that the key subjects um, they all kind of line up with the lines. Um, when you're filming kind of like one person in kind of more of an interview kind of like style, um, the subject should fill most of the space was getting out too much out of frame. So make sure you're not having any like cropped heads or shoulders. Um, as you can see, oops, I, as you can see with like this um, person right here, um, you wanna film from the chest up and close to the head as possible. So kind of leave just a little bit space on top and the eye level, the eyes should kind of hit around this top horizontal line. So this is just some more examples of what I think are, is good comp composition. Um, these are actually real YouTubers, so these are people who you know make videos for a living, but most YouTubers make their videos at home. And as you can see, a lot of them has a, were able to make very good use of their space you know, behind, in an office, in a bedroom, in a kitchen. Um, so I hope that kind of gives you a bit of inspiration knowing that, you know, you can make a good video anywhere. And again, you can see that all of these people are using the rule of thumb. You can see if we imagine a horizontal line, their eye line kind of meets here. Um, it is kind of a personal choice whether or not you want to be exact center or slightly skewed. Personally, I like to kind of put my subjects a little bit skewed. I guess like if you're seeing my camera right now, this is how I might usually frame up my people, but it's all just kind of a personal choice. Um, if you are filming in a church and you're going to be sitting in front of a pulpit, so if your set is pretty symmetrical, then I would say maybe a center, like putting your subject in the center is probably the best way to go. Um, if you're going to be filming with two people in frame, um, this is probably how I uh, suggest maybe um, placing them. Oh, oops. Uh, so again, yeah, just um, follow kind of the rule of thirds, making sure that you're not um, cropping anyone's head, especially if you know your subjects are of different height. Um, if you are gonna be sitting, I think it's okay to put the table and make sure that you fill out, you know, making sure that you have their whole arm down. Um, fun fact, if anyone is cares to know, this guy is the author of Fault in Our Stars. It was a really popular teen novel several years back. And he's been making YouTube um, videos for a very long time. Um, his writing career is a lot longer than videos, but I hope this kind of shows that like anybody, <laughs> again, can make videos. And he's probably one of the most successful video makers on YouTube, so. Um, okay. I wanna just make a note, Christina, someone yes. shared in the chat that if they're, if they're worried about their settings in their mm -hmm. iPad, they can download apps. And some apps mm -hmm. can actually help adapt your iPad. Um, for, okay. for that sort of thing. So, cool. Um, there's That's the, very. Like, Pro was one of them, or Phil Mike Pro, whichever it is. It's one of the recommendations someone shared. That's very good to know. I actually didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't either. I'm learning too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to briefly talk about, um, you know, places you can go to get um, additional media for your video. Um, as if you know. Uh, so there is this thing, there's a license called Creative Commons, and it's basically uh, a license that content creators can label their work to give people permission for reuse. Um, and if you want to learn more about it, you can just visit creativecommons.org um, uh, to, learn, to learn more. Um, and so I've kind of listed a couple of different um, places where you can go to access material that um, our label Creative Commons. So for music, um, YouTube has a editing studio, like a very simple one, and they have a library full of um, royalty-free music. You will have to upload your video first and into and go into their editing studio, and then you'll be able to access their um, audio library. Um, SoundCloud is also a good place to go. It's where I used to get a lot of my music for videos before I worked with the conference. 
Um, and you just have to kind of do like a search, let's say like acoustic guitar or happy piano. And um, when you pull up a track, the musician will usually put like a link if, to say that you can download this for free. Um, this uh, website right here, this is a musician that I had found, XL, um, found on SoundCloud. Um, okay. And um, as you can see, he has quite a drawn a, li a library and quite a genre of music. Um, and he writes here that you can use any of his music tracks for free without monetization. And so every kind of artist, content creator is going to have their own rules of how you can use their stuff. And so you just need to make sure you read and like follow their guidelines. All right. Uh, with images. Um, you know, probably the easiest thing you can do is just take your own photos. Um, I will say with my kind of experience making videos for conference, it is kind of hard to find church related, religious related photos. There's not really a huge kind of database on the internet. Um, but if you are looking for um, places to uh, get images, Wikimedia is a good source. Um, Creative Commons actually has their own search engine uh, where they pull, vid um, pull images from um, all different platforms that are free to use for um, for reuse. Google Images also has a search filter um, for licenses, and I can kind of show you right here again. Um, While she's pulling that up, my go-to is Unsplash. I go to unsplash.com and pull pull stuff from that all the time. And that it's completely free to use in any pretty much any context. They do give you a, a way to credit the, the photographer if you want to. So I usually find space to list that credit for that photographer. Yeah. Let's say you want to um, find like pictures of the cost. Um, you will go into tools and then under usage price, just find one label for reuse. And I will also additionally try um, also filter out for large sizes um, because you want to make sure that your image is also of good quality because you don't want to have to stretch it out and pixelate your image. And so any of these are you know free to use for reuse. Okay, again, if you also want to look for video, um, YouTube has kind of the same thing. They also have a Creative Commons filter. Um, So I actually kind of just like if I wanted like a, you know, B-roll uh, or video of a sun setting, then, you know, I can actually have any of these to use without uh, worrying about copyrights. Um, so yeah, YouTube actually doesn't allow, like the website itself doesn't allow for download, but there are um, other websites where if you like put in the YouTube URL link, then it will help you pull down the video. So these are all free to use with Creative Commons, but unfortunately, YouTube doesn't actually have a way for you to access the videos on their website. And so you will have to use um, a, a video downloading website um, to get your video. Okay, so that's kind of the end of my presentation version. So if you like, we can move on to editing footage. Does anybody have questions? I know that was like a lot of information to go through. Um, someone mentioned that onelicense.net is offering um, a free license until April 15th for hymns and sacred music. So if you need some of that, that might be a good place to go for that. Okay. And then someone also mentioned that their youth are creating tracks. So if you're, if you, you've got talented people in your congregation that can make tracks for you, man, encourage them to do that. Give them a sense of the, of the mood you're trying to set and, and let them use their creative minds and, and skills as well. Yeah. That's really good to hear. Yeah. I would, yeah, I would say try to make your own content first when it comes to like pictures or music, because it's, you don't have to worry about copyright and stuff and you have a bit more control of, you know, the thing that you're looking for. It is definitely very hard to kind of like scour the internet to find the exact thing you're looking for. So if you're able, if you have access and able to like make your own content, go for it. Okay. 
while she's pulling up the other video that she's going to show or the, the, the editing software, someone asked if this video would be available later to watch. Yes, it will be. We will cut it and put it on YouTube in its entirety. We will cut it into bite-sized chunks and put it on course. Um, the YouTube one should be up in the next day or two. Course will be up by the end of this weekend. So this will be available for you. Okay, here it is. All right, so, whoop. Okay, so what I'm pulling up is um, iMovie. Uh, this is, you know, available on Macs. Um, unfortunately, Windows doesn't have its own kind of like in-app video editing software anymore. Um, so you will have to <laughs> um, either, you know, Michelle's gonna present, uh, present Adobe Rush, which is one is very compatible with PC. Uh, um, if you, I have heard of DaVinci is a free um, video software that you can um, download. So, yeah. and and it, and iMovie is not just available on on a Mac system, but it's available on iPads and iPhones as well. Okay, so I am basically gonna make a video from scratch, um, and so this is just the one that I had did practice with. So we're just going to basically make the same video again. Uh, so first of all, you have to do is create basically a new project. So I'm just going to click on movie. And then it's going to open this kind of page. And so here's the space. This is where your all of your media is going to um, be stored in. This is the monitor where you're going to be able to view your movie. And this is your timeline. This is where you're going to do the actual editing parts. So I'm going to go into import media. I'm just going to click and then it's going to open up and I'm going to go and find my footage. And so I have stored my footage in my desktop. Audit testimonial. And then I'm going to import selected. So now I have my footage, and then I'm also going to import my audio. Wait, no, that's not right. It's doing a little, it's, it's lagging a little bit. That's gonna happen um, when you're uh, working on software. Sometimes it's gonna lag and freeze up. Um, okay, I'm gonna pull my audio track. For some reason, it doesn't want to let me add more, so I'm just gonna drag my audio track into software. Just gonna pull it there. Okay. So now you have your video and your audio, and these were recorded separ separately. And so what you have to do is sync them together. Um, this is something that I didn't mention before, um, and I probably should have. But when you are, uh, when you have, when you are filming, when you are recording, you have to do what's called a sync clap. And I wish, and it's basically kind of a place, a, a visual and audio marker for where you can see the. Uh, video and where you can put the video and audio track together. So I will show you that in a little bit, um, how you can do it because we'll see it on video. So I have my clip here. Um, so as you can see, there's a um, movie clapper board. And this is why you see this in movies all the time. It's to sync the video and the audio together. Um, you can do this with your hands, just, you know, you just turn on both. You have to make sure that your um, your camera and your audio recording device um, are turned on. Um, and then you just go like this. And so what we are looking for is this point where you make the clap sound and when your hands are together. That's the same thing that we're going to um, do with this clap report. So um, here are a couple of shortcuts, uh, keys that you will have to kind of have in order to um, do the sync. So I'm just gonna go in, I'm gonna play my footage. Okay. 
and I'm just waiting for uh, when the clap happens. Okay, um, you can kind of fast forward through your video. This is just me um, zooming in a little bit closer. Um, there is a visual peak that you can see, it's really, I don't know if it's hard to tell, but you can see a little bit of a spike right here. That's actually an indicator that that's the clap. So if I scroll, you can see the clap. So what I'm gonna do, um, you have your air keys, your, um, your left and right keys. If you press it one at a time, it goes through the video frame by frame. And so, um, let me scroll through it. So I'm gonna press space bar. And I'm going to stop just before she does the clap. And now I can go frame by frame. And see, see the point where the, um, the bar hits right there. And it's kind of hard. I don't think you can hear the audio from the software, right? Correct. We can. Okay. I probably need to stop and make sure that people can hear that. How do we... Um, you want to, when you share screen, you want to choose the um, share uh, computer sound. Computer audio. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. This is the point I need to take off my headphones. Right, okay. right, 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 right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, you made your mark here, and then you're going to press at least an um, I maybe you're going to press M, and you can see it's made a little marker on. Um, your video and so now we're going to do the same thing with the audio track um, so I'm just going to kind of pull this away from the video and then I'm also going to go back in and look for the same point in the video where we made that clap oh. and I will tell you when you have this on your own screen you can make these these spaces like see you're going to be able to see there's there's peaks in here um, and um, you can, you can spread them out further in some of the software and really see the huge spike that pops up to line up the sound. Yeah, so as you can see, I found my little spike. Again, I'm gonna, oops. Take one. You can hear that clip of a sound. And so I'm gonna go backward. I'm gonna use my air keys to move through the footage frame by frame until I hear that peak, so. So actually, yeah, I actually had to listen for like the ch sound rather than like the really large peak because that's actually the point where the clap um, sound actually, like the clap where actually meets. So again, I'm gonna make my mark, oop. Gonna make my marker. Um, Sometimes I can't nail this down the first time. <laughs> See y'all, even the professionals, it has, takes a minute to get here and there, so no yeah. worries. Also, I'm not, I'm not, I don't use um, iMovie to make videos, and so this is kind of like my first time ever using it, so I had to like give myself a very quick crash course on how to um, use their mechanics, but every video software is gonna have the very basic functions. It's just gonna play a little bit differently. So, okay, now that I got my two marker bars, now is, now is the time to um, line the video and audio together. So I'm gonna zoom out. Oh, also, if you need to undo an action, it's just Control Z. Um, and uh, if you need to fast forward with footage, um, at least in iMovie, you can use the key L to go forward, to, to play through your video quicker. Okay, so now I'm just gonna highlight my um, video and now I'm gonna drag it until the blue markers highlight together. So I'm gonna go a little bit closer. So now you see it should highlight the, the yellow line. Is, if it's highlighted like that, it's showing you that the, the markers are synced up to each other. Now I'm gonna go in and, so this is the camera audio and I'm just gonna pull it all the way down. I'm just gonna cut it out. And now, if I did this right, we should only hear the audio from 
our recording device, but it's going to be completely in sync. We realized at Cornerstone that we, one of our growing areas See. is... And so sometimes you're not going to be able to, you might not get it synced at the right time. Um, and so you're just going to have to make sure that the lips and the sound are in sync together. Um, it does take a little bit of practice, but, you know, as long as you make sure that you do a clap, just like a clean clap, um, just before you start your first take, and then it's a pretty, you know, straightforward system. And, and I will say that you only have to do this editing of the sound if you are not using the camera sound. Um, if you have done an, an, an additional sound like we talked about, you could record into your, your notes in your iPhone or you could use one of the external uh, recording devices. If you're using the sound that's synced to the video, you don't have to do this. The reason that we're showing you this is because a lot of times that's not the best sound. Um, and so we're giving you that option of, of syncing better sound up against video. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, and you also, um, if you happen to forget to do the sync clap at the beginning of a video, as long as you don't turn off the camera or recording device, you can do it at the end and you can do your sync clap at the end. Just make sure that both are turned on before you start the sync clap. Okay, now that we have our audio um, and video synced together, we're going to start clipping um, our takes. I'm gonna pull this up soon. So what I'm going to do, um, and so it's pretty easy if you are able to read your audio track. Now I can see this is the part that Kathleen is talking. Um, and so this kind of gives me a good place to roughly, you know, know, okay, this is where I should make my cart. And I can just kind of skip to the parts that I, I need to. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just play just to see what she has. I realized at Cornerstone that we, one of our growing areas is communication. Okay. So I know that I should make a cut about here. So at this point, I'm gonna right click, right click. Um, I also have to highlight both of them to kind of make sure that they're both highlighted yellow. You're gonna go right click, and then you're gonna split the click, uh, clip, clip. Um, and then now I can just get rid of this. Um, and then it's also going to automatically push your um, footage to the end um, as well. So then I'm also going to go to the end of her take and just play it. Really good feedback um, to, to help us grow. Okay, I know this is a good place. This is the end of her statement. So I'm also going to, again, make sure both, both are highlighted. Right click. Split the clip. Okay. And then I'm gonna go in again. And so um this kind of this kind of like stage of editing is called rough cutting, where you are basically getting all your main clips together. You're getting in the order, you're getting them, you know, cut to where exactly you need it. Um and I guess Michelle, you can talk about collaboration since I am in the midst of rough cutting. I'm gonna sure. be doing the same things over and over again. I'm just cutting out all the unnecessary bits. I am taking all of her good takes and putting them together. So while I am doing that, Michelle, you could probably talk. Yeah, yeah. I'll talk about collaboration. I'll also answer a couple of, of questions that are in the, the chat as well. So um uh, and Matt, if you um if you will clarify if you want guidance on how to stream video or where to stream video um that would be great so um but uh the way we do our collaboration so a lot of times christina will do a rough cut and she will save the video in a smaller um uh, format like we talked about usually we upload at 1080p or we upload at 4k but when she's doing a rough cut a lot of times she'll save at 720 or what is it 480 or so um, whatever the one is down from 720 she'll save it in that which will be it'll be grainy and kind of rough footage but she'll upload it to Google Drive now remember that all of us who have arumc.org uh, accounts have access to the Google suite and so she just has a video file in there she uploads it to that she shares it with me then I can go watch the video from Google Drive send her any notes on any um, uh, changes that I want made and then she can make those changes again upload a lower resolution uh, video for me to check 
So we do not have to be in the same room. We don't even have to be in the same state. We have done some collaboration uh, from completely different <laughs> places on the planet uh, before. And, and so if you've got people that are helping you, or you should have people who are helping you. There are probably folks in your congregation who are maybe a little bit more savvy at this than we are. Um, it could be a teenager or um, a college student in your in your congregation. And again, they don't have to be in town. You can you can get their help from far away. Um, they maybe they want to do this cutting for you. Maybe they have a creative idea for a video, and you could send them some footage, and they could make a trailer for worship. Uh, to get people excited about it. Um, this is an opportunity for you to pull on the skills of some of the other folks in your congregation. And with the technology that we have, it's pretty easy to do that kind of collaboration. The other way that you can collaborate is you see that Christine is sharing her screen with me right, and all of you right now through Zoom. You could do it through Zoom. You could, you could say, all right, you could get together with your worship team and say, this is, this is the footage that we have to work with. Um, if we were trying to um, really excite people about coming to worship. What, how, how might we lay this out? Can we can collaborate in those terms? We showed you where you can get those other pieces, where you can get the music pieces, where you can get image pieces, where you can get other video. And and Christina made a reference to that being um, uh, uh, B-roll. Basically, that's other footage that you can drop in over your, like, like use your sound or change the sound out, you can drop that in so that um, maybe you film you talking about worship, but you're talking about uh, how every day we, we are renewed by the rising of the sun. You go pull some of that sunrise footage and you drop the sunrise footage in, but keep your sound so that your narration is still going on while the B-roll footage is being dropped in o over that. Um, but those kinds of ideas, you can you can collaborate with other folks and get those ideas and and come up with those things. You might also have people in your congregation who are um, sharing uh, different pictures, um, or they're 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 photographers of sorts, uh, and you can ask them, "Hey, can I borrow some of your photography? Can we use some of your photography for this video that we're putting together?" We talked yesterday in the engagement, engagement for through social. Um, uh, through social media, how to use social media for virtual worship. We talked about invite your, your people to send a 10 to 20 second video answering a question and you take those videos and cut them up. Um, and that's another piece of collaboration that you can do. You do not have to do all the shooting alone. <laughs> you do not have to be the sole creative energy in your congregation. You can use the technology that we've got here to, to bounce ideas off people and to actually share some of the work back and forth uh, as well. So I encourage you to do that. It's been wonderful working with Christina um, this past year, having those, those tools of collaboration that we could do because we, two, uh, two minds in this um, were better at, co at conceiving of the ideas that we came up with. So, um, okay. Um, what other questions? Christina, are you ready to show us more of the video or? Um, uh, yes, I, I think I'm ready. Okay. Um, I am trying to find the music bed that I had for, um, I had used and used, but I can't seem to find it. Well, anyway, um, it's not a huge deal if I can't find that exact one. Um, nope, that's not the right, whoops. So she's right now pulling some of those other clip options, which what we talked about, like uh, B-roll footage. Um, I have been to a couple of different congregations and just filmed different acts of their worship. We have used some of those pieces to cut into some videos that we have prepared as well. So, Yeah, apologies. I'm trying to find the music bed that I had um, pulled from the last time. Just trying to look for it right now. Oh, there it is. Okay, it was just in my iTunes. Okay, so, so let me just go in, pull it in. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah. Now, now this is a point. So I have two kind of clips I I, I want to use, and um, 
Now I'm kind of in the point where I'm going to kind of add on the rest of the effects. So this is kind of now we're at more the point of like the final uh, cut. And so at this point, so your rough cut should be, you know, the draft that everyone agrees, okay, we like this order of clips. We like all the cuts, editing cuts we made. Now it's kind of trying to put all the elements together. And this is called the final cut. Um, so now I'm going to go in and start adding things like transitions, text, the music and additional B-roll or images. So I'm gonna start with showing you how to add titles. Um, the nice thing about um, iMovie, they have a lot of like pre kind of animated stuff. Unfortunately, it's limited. You can't move the text box around. You just have to uh, just use what they have like, um, um, in, in this placement, you just can't you can't move this higher or lower if you want to. So that's kind of the downside of iMovie. But you know, it's in center, and I think it's still very useful. Now, um, the nice thing you can do is that you can kind of like drag through. That's also another thing you should note is that you can also make sure you can just scrub through things very quickly here um, to preview things before you put them in your timeline. Um, anyway, back to title. So let's say I want to just use this one and I'm just going to drag it and I'm going to plop it into the front. So a nice kind of like in video kind of intro to do is like doing like a little title piece um, with some kind of background. If you want to take like B-roll footage of your church and then pop in the title, that's kind of a nice way to introduce, you know, your video is kind of like an establishing shot. So if you see any sitcoms and they, you know, pull up you know, the image of their apartments, and then they cut to the inside of the apartment, like kind of shows you, ah, oh, this is, this is where they are. And so, you know, you can kind of do something nice like that. Um, so they have backgrounds here. And so I'm just going to just use a simple black background and put it, uh, shoot, right. Okay. Um, when you are stacking things in, um, editing, you have to kind of think of things like in like layers of a cake. And so, you know, you're, if you put a title below your video, it's just going to be covered. You're not going to see it. So you have to kind of think of like, okay, so I have a video, then the text has to go on top of that video. Um, so on. So I'm going to go into my text and I, you know, as you can see it's highlighted and then I can go in here and edit the text. So I'm going to just put in and so conference, and this footage actually was a testimonial that we took for um, Jacob's auditing um, uh, meetings. So I'm just going to call it audit and a testimonial. And so if you run through it, you can see it's got like a little nice animation like that. Now, um, I will show you how to make a lower third. So a lower third is basically a text graphic and it usually kind of helps to introduce a person. It's normally where you will put someone's name. Um, and so you can see that iMovie has already preset. This is, they have a lower third right here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use their standard and I'm just gonna plop it on top. Um, if you're gonna, if you're wondering about like how long you should keep these up, I usually like to do five seconds, but four is, you know, is still reasonable. Um, you just want to make sure that you're putting, for how much text you have, it's just long enough for everyone to be able to read it. Um, and, so and, here, and to expand that, you just, you just click on the end of it and drag it out. Um, we'll, we'll make it stay up on the, on the screen longer. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll show you how to um, kind of drag it out. So we have Kathleen McMurray, it's McMurray, right? Okay, and she's from Cornerstone UMC. Um, so we can go back in here, and so you can see the little two arrows that comes up, and then you can see, you can drag it out for however long you want it. Um, so now when we play this all together, oops. Yeah, and then now that I kind of see a bit more that I probably need to kind of cut this down a little bit and again, you can just kind of drag um, You're gonna have to highlight both, but you can drag it to kind of clip it a little bit shorter um, Or not this uh, iMovie has different functions with Premiere. You can't do that. You're just gonna have to split the clip again <laughs> Apologies 
Um, so you just kind of have to cut. Okay, so I just kind of skimmed a bit. So, um, okay, now I will show if how to um, add in an image. So again, you can just again drag it into it. Um, if you want to add a transition, I like usually if you're transitioning from video to image to add kind of like a transition to kind of help it like fade in a little bit better. You can do that. You can leave it on top and it'll just cut um, right into the image like this if you like. And you can see that um, iMovie also has like a preset transition space. If you click on this like cropping image up here, you can see that there is a start and an end. And so you can kind of drag these two boxes to kind of make um, some kind of movement. Um, I usually try to not make any fast transitions. It's kind of very disorienting. So just, um, oh, if you're gonna add a movie, just make it fairly subtle. Um, so if I wanna add like a cross dissolve from the video to the image, I would, I have to actually cut the video. And so again, I'm gonna just split clip on both sides of the image. And then I'm gonna, put this image out. Okay. Um, and then cut. And then transitions is about right here. Um, so again, you just put them in between your footage. Yeah, and a little, and um, things playing in your timeline might be a little bit laggy. Um, that's just kind of, it just, it's your computer trying to like process a video and it can't really catch up. So don't worry about it too, uh, too much if it kind of looks like that. Um, give it, just give your computer some time to kind of like process everything. Yeah. Um, it's, it doesn't mean that it's like there's something wrong with the video itself. It usually means it's just needing more time to process. Right. Okay. Christina, um, I want to honor their time. So can you show them yes. now how to export? Okay. All right. Um, so if you want to export this footage, um, you just go into file and share, and you'll probably just want it into a file. So it comes up like this, and then you're going to see, well, this doesn't need it demonstration. Um, you'll see its resolution and you can see you can toggle in between um, demo, uh, resolution. So if you're in a rough cut stage and make it you know lower, but we're going to keep it at 1080p. Um, you want the quality as high and then compress. You want it in a better quality. You don't want, you want to avoid compression. Then you click next and then it's going to show you where you can save it. So I'm just going to save it onto my desktop. Click save and next. And then you should see the video appear somewhere. I think it's taking it some time. Yeah, and now it's um, on its, it's, it's in the process of showing up. Um, it's gonna take some time to have it fully exported. Um, but now, now that you have your video file, then it's ready to be uploaded on to YouTube. So, um, unfortunately, due to time constraints, I wasn't able to show everything in the editing process, but um, that's general gist of how you can edit. Yeah, I mean, you covered a lot. You showed us um, how to cut clips up, how to add titles, how to add um, other footage, um, how to sync the sound. So all of those are real um, uh, basic um, skills on that. I did see uh, a note from Lori that, that it is kind of small to see this. So that's why she talked through some of it. And when we load this back up, hopefully you'll be able to expose, um, you'll, you'll pay off to a bigger um, screen on it. But mostly what we wanted to do was show you how it's done and show you that you can do it um, so that you build some confidence in going in yourself and just experimenting with this. Play around a little bit with it. I know we're under a lot of time stress right now, um, so, so don't worry about picking up all of these skills at once. 
add a new skill in each week, um, play around with a new piece each week. And like I said, don't be afraid to invite in the folks in your congregation who have done some of this work. Practically every youth um, who is in our uh, congregations right now has had to do a video for school. Um, so they probably know some of these basic skills as well and can sit down uh, with you and see that. Um, that is the bulk of what uh, we wanted to share and show you today so that you could have a sense of, of how of the fullness of, of the video process and get some of those basic skills met. We are going to stay on for a few more questions if you have those. And then I'm going to demonstrate a different video editing software tool, Adobe uh, Premiere, which is uh, really a lot of folks that, that use PCs um, do that. So, uh, so I'm going to stay on and do that and also be able to show you that, like I said, that a pastor can do this too. Um, so you're welcome to stick around. Um, if, if this is your brain swimming and you just want to, you want to stop and take this all in, Christina and I are both available uh, for questions later. We also encourage you now that you know what's possible out there to go online to YouTube and just type in, um, you know, like, editing video in iMovie or editing video in Adobe or editing video in, you know, if your camera came with some footage. And there, there are usually how-tos that you can step through bit by bit by bit for those. Um, but if those don't help you, then like I said, Christina and I are both available and we'll be happy to walk uh, through this. If you don't have any other questions and you don't want to stick around for the other demo, you are free to go. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, and like I said, we're here to help you in any way. If you have more questions, please share them in the, in the comment section now. Um, we will put some links up to some of the things that we talked about. Christina, quit sharing your screen for just a second. Um, I had someone ask about some of the, um, so this is um, one of the external mics that she talked about, um, the one that you, your people need to be basically in front of the mic. You can see that it has a, a, a like a headphone adapter that would plug into a camera or plug into a phone. Um, just normally where you would plug in your headphones is where you can put that in. And then this is one of the portable recorders that she was talking about. Um, so I actually do my system. My camera that I bought, my uh, fancy DSLR camera or, or um, digital camera, um, does not actually have a, a microphone jack. Um, so I do my sound by plugging into this and, and then doing the recording here and then syncing up the sound with the clap. So um, um, that these are a couple of options. We do also have some of the lavalier mics, the ones that, that, that attach to your lapel that we, we sync into these uh, as well. So that's another option. We'll put some links to some of that equipment. We're not endorsing any one particular brand over another. You saw that we both have Rode mics and Rodes are, are tend to be really good. Um, but there are all kinds of different options out there. You may also have noticed that my sound is a little better than the previous webinars. It's because I finally got the cord for my Yeti mic. This is used by podcasters. If you're going to narrate over video, this is a microphone that can sync directly into your, it hooks up by USB and syncs right into your computer and I can narrate video um, actually as I'm editing. So uh, that's some other um, equipment available as well. Um, okay, any other questions? I'm gonna give you about 30 more seconds for questions and then I'll go into sharing the video editing software from my end. Like I said, I'm working yeah. with Adobe. Um, she said I was gonna use Adobe Rush. I actually don't have Adobe Rush, I have Adobe Premiere Elements, which oh, is not wow. free. The um, Rush one, I think, is free. Is it free, Christina? I'm Adobe? not sure. I don't use Adobe Rush. Um, that will probably be a question for Caleb because he uses it. Right. Um, it's it's the lower version than than Elements. Uh, the Elements costs me, I want to say, about seventy dollars a year to to have access to it but it regularly updates um it doesn't do as much as what christina works with typically which is pro which can stack all kinds of different footage together and sync them up um but uh it does it does do a little bit more basic uh footage um which is what i, I like to do so i'm going to go ahead i don't see christina if you'll watch the chat while i'm doing this and ask me any yeah. questions I'm going to so go ahead. Do you mind if I share the final video that was meant like sure, the demo sure. to yeah. kind of show this is like, this is a kind of final product that I was, you know, yeah. I should have gotten to. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 
uh, just make sure you click on share computer sound. Right. Unplug. Okay. Um, so yeah, if I had a bit more time, I would have been able to show, uh, get through all the bits of edits that I've done. But uh, basically, this would have been the final product. So. We realized at Cornerstone that we, one of our growing areas is communications, both within the church and outside of the church. And we felt that this was a really great way bringing someone in who is not a part of that, getting a set of fresh eyes, um, particularly someone who uh, could give us different data, different uh, ways of looking at things to bring in that set of fresh eyes uh, to offer us some, some really good feedback um, to, to help us grow. So Jacob came up to our church one day. We had invited myself as well as some other staff members and laity who were interested in helping us yeah, to have a better another example of the Lord communication years. blueprint for our church. And he presented us with data about our audience outside of our church, uh, the audience of our mission field, kind of the demographics of people, what types yeah, of communication. But the main point I wanted to show was just the end bit. So if you want to find a way to like transition oh, out of your video, not quite video technologically savvy. Um, and so he was able to help us through that, as well as looking at our physical structure and what we are communicating with our building, with our facilities, with our land, and what we are communicating to the outside world so that we can better reach our neighbors. Okay, so that last transition is, is just um, just a fade to black, and it's just kind of a nice way for you to end your video. As you can see, I did put some music in the background. Um, I would say make your rough cut first, and then look for music that, you know, is longer or just at the right amount, because, or you might, you know, be stuck trying to um, extend it, and that's a little bit more difficult to edit. As you can see, I did manage to um, extend my music a little bit longer by kind of doing some mixing, but just find, just stick to kind of music that is longer than your video, and then you can cut it short and also put in like a fade transition. You can fade the volume down, and then that's a good way to end the video. So, um, okay, perfect. Um, okay, if you'll unshare your screen, then I'll share mine. Okay. Okay, so this is Premiere Elements, um, and you can see it looks just a little bit different than the iMovie one. This one is a little bit more, um, uh, like like I said, there's a, there's an expense to this one. It doesn't come free. There's all of these different options. There's a, a, a music option, a voice option, audio one, video one, audio two, video two, audio three, video three, and you can actually add more stacks on top of that. I've never needed more stacks than that, but, um, but you can. So I'm going to go actually in add media from, um, and I've got mine saved in, in files and folders. So I'm going to go in files and folders and, uh, we're going to look at the, um, uh, online teaching session that I did for our, um, local pastor licensing school, uh, instructors the other day. So I'm just going to click on that. I want that, uh, and then click it to open. And you'll see that it's starting to add the media in. It's going to take just a, a little bit of time to do that. Um, and um, then it will drop right up here. And all I have to do is grab a hold of that uh, file and drag it down. Uh, it's still processing, so it'll take it just a minute here. So all I have to do is grab a hold, drag it down, and drop it on the audio one and video one. Um, levels and you see that it's just right now uh, two black and and gray bars that is because they are still working on processing the um, the equipment so um, or processing the, the um, piece while it's doing that processing I'm actually going to hop over and show you another piece of media that I'm going to need which is um, I'm going to drop my slides in and drop them in um, at least this first one I'm going to drop in as a full slide. So I'm going to now share my um, 
my PowerPoint from that day to show you how I typically drop slides in. Um, and because what you, what you need to do ideally is convert your slides from a PowerPoint where it's all linked together um, to individual slides and they go in better as graphics than as individual PowerPoint slides. So um, what I'm gonna do is, um, if, you, if you see I'm going to the file, I'm gonna choose save as and I'm on the slide that I wanna work with, which is that opening slide. I'm gonna go into my um, file that I wanna save it in and down here, I'm going to name the slide. Um, so I'm going to name it opening, opening slide. And instead of saving it as a PowerPoint, which would save the entire document as a PowerPoint named open, opening slide, I'm going to instead choose PNG, which is Portable Networks Graphic Format. That's the one that I found is the easiest to work with um, whenever I'm dropping it into video. So I'm going to choose PNG and then I'm gonna hit save, and it's gonna ask me, which slides do you want to export? Since I'm doing this as individual slides, I'm going to choose just this one. Um, so now I have a slide saved as a graphic. So I'm gonna stop share on that. Go back over here to Premiere Elements. Okay, now you see in my bar that it's got the whole, um, the whole clip that I wanna work with. I'm gonna go back over here to add media, to files and folders. And this time I'm gonna choose that opening slide option and bring it in. So it's loading it in, so it's ready to go whenever I, I need it. Now, um, I'm gonna start playing my footage. And this is the, all the advanced footage that I have. By the way, could y'all hear the sound on that? I did. Okay. Um, if you did, then probably everybody did. So I'm going to skip ahead on my footage to where that first slide pops in. Now I'm going to skip past the prayer um, for the footage cut, um, just because this is going to be cut as a course. I pray a long time, apparently. So, okay. so all I'm doing to skip ahead is I've taken my cursor and grabbed a hold of this little blue arrow at the top here, clicked on it, and then pulled it forward. Aha! Now see, um, if, if this was more el evident down here on this uh, second blue line where the audio one is, I noticed that there's a drop off in the sound and that there's all these little bars doo -doo 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 -doo, and there's a drop in the sound. So I figured that's probably where at the end of the amen. So now on Adobe Premiere Elements, um, in, the way they have to cut a clip is you see, you, hopefully you can see that there's a little white tab here. It's got a pair of scissors in it. Um, so that's to help you remember that if you click on that, then you've made a cut. Um, so I've made my first cut there. Then if I click on the footage that I just wanted to have removed so that it's now the highlighted footage, I can just hit my delete key and it, it's gone. Um, and so now I have uh, the front of my footage cut. Then say I want to go to the very back end and figure out uh, uh, on Adobe, there's some buttons up here that'll help you hop forward or hop backward. Um, this uh, little one that looks like a, an arrow next to a golf tee is what I always think of it as, will put you, will move you to the next cut. Since I haven't made any other cuts in this video, I know that it's gonna take me to the end of, um, of my footage. So now I'm gonna drag it back um, to see uh, where I wanna cut the footage now. So let's see what's happening here. Okay, we're still talking there. So um, I want to get back to where I was presenting. There we 
there was a kind of question and answer section, and I'm going to cut all of that out. So I see another gap in sound here, so I'm going to back it up a little here and see what's happening in that. Okay, so that's that's very specific to local pastor licensing school. So I'm going to drag it even further back. Okay, and there's a little drop off in sound here again. Okay, no, nope. still teaching there. Still teaching. Isn't that fun sound? You're hearing me dodge through right there. Now, I do have the same capacity as um, she had in iMovie in that I can step back bit by bit by bit. Um, it's just a little, it's like a, a play sign or a, or a back sign with an extra line by it. And that just stops, that goes frame by frame by frame through. So I'm going to um, get past the resources used tab just by stepping through that. And then I'm going to go back to the very last one of those and hit my cut sign right there. And then um, the piece that I want to wipe out is highlighted. So I'm going to hit delete on that. Um, and that, and then I'm going to go back to the beginning of my clip again. Um, so now I have the whole thing cut. Um, and usually at that point, when I've made my whole cut, I like to save a copy right there um, so that I don't lose those cuts. And I will call this online teaching. And I, I, since I'm going to cut this down into a bunch of chunks for course, I'm going to call this one the full. So if I need the, to come back to the full footage, I have that. So in a minute here, when I make the, the first cut that I need to make um, for, um, for course, I will um, save it again as that particular topic. But now, if I want to drop in my first slide, all I've got to do, and again, Christina said, think in terms of layers of cake. So the higher up you go on the layer, the, that's what's visible. So if I want this opening slide to be the, the most visible thing, I'm gonna put it, drop it on the video two line, which is above the video one line. So now if I play my video, um, so you see it was a subtle shift there because I was sharing my screen in the um, in the zoom video in fact let me see if I can make that screen bigger I think you have to go to the monitor with like the little arrows on the right hand side uh, oh this this one yeah I think yep so you can see Here, I'm going to escape out of that and, and put it at the very beginning. You'll see a very subtle change, and then it'll go from a full slide to it'll go to having my face in the corner. Um, and that's where it will shift over from the PowerPoint slide to the to the video. again. So I will do that. There we go. There was the shift. Um, and obviously, if I, if I had a different video that had, you know, my full face talking, then then it would have switched at that point to the full video. Um, I can do the, a similar thing as far as adding in um, text, which I'm going to demonstrate. I don't need it for this because I have the text in my in my slide, and because I'm not full screen. But in in Adobe Premiere, it has a, a titles option over here, and I usually go to um, just general titles, um, and then I grab a hold of it and uh, drop it in video three. Um, and actually, I'm going to line it up so that that title starts just after my PowerPoint slide starts. Um, and then if I double click on the, the little default text there, then you can see 
Um, so it's, well, it's kind of hard to see because it's on top of each other. Um, <laughs> so just a minute, I'll show you, uh, I'll pull it up and show you with, and with premiere elements, you know, Christina said with iMovie, you can't move the text around with premiere. You can, um, I'm going to click on this little click and drag button and I can grab a hold of the text and move it up and move it down and, and put it wherever I want to put it. Um, Christina knows how to do this, uh, like type in different points on it. Um, I just click and drag because that's what I know how to do. Um, and then I go back over to mode and go back into text mode. And then I can just type. Um, and you can see that it's gone off the screen. Well, hopefully you can see that. Um, and so I'm going to drag it back over, but that's still pretty big of, as far as the text goes. So I'm going to go back and click back into text mode and I'm going to highlight all of my text, just like you would highlight in a Word document. And then over on the right hand side, you see that there's a size option. So I'm going to change the size of the text. So I'm going to drop it down to about 200 and that makes it a little bit better. Um, maybe I want to make it even smaller than that. Um, so I can put it there and I could actually move this if I wanted it to be a lower thirds sort of option, then I can again switch back over to the click and halt and drag and I could move it down into the lower thirds of the screen um, and kind of put it wherever I needed to put it. So now this is going to look a little funny, um, but uh, I'll play the video again and we'll see how that uh, text. Okay, so we'll go to so you see how that popped in and again I could make that um, that text be on there as long as I wanted to again just click on the little piece and drag it out so if I wanted my name to be up there for 20 seconds um, that's highly arrogant of me but let's just pretend that's the case um, and so I, I've changed now the length of time my name will be up there. And then, uh, of course, any questions that you have, please feel free to raise those. And then, uh, See, um, my name, I'm just, it's all up there, right? <laughs> okay. So, um, so that, that shows you how to drop text in. Um, and those are those are pretty basic things that you can do in there. I just wanted you all to see that um, there are other options out there for uh, for video editing software that you can put in PowerPoint slides into your video, um, and that you uh, that you can add text in and do do sorts of things like that. So, are there questions out there? Any other questions? Those are. I just wanted to show you again another kind of basic approach to, to video editing. So we got any questions? I'll, I'll stop my share and hop back out. Um, okay. Um, okay, so somebody shared something about TechSoup.org has desktop versions of, of Premiere Elements. Okay, oh, sweet, in a bundle for 27. Woo, that's awesome. I'm gonna switch over to that. Um, yes. Yeah, Creative Cloud, you can get a subscription to Creative Cloud and it will come with a ton of stuff. It'll come with Adobe editors um, so that you can build Adobe forms and that sort of thing. You may not need all of that, uh, that reality. And it is pretty pricey to go with Creative Cloud. So, um, yeah. Um, what else? Any other questions or comments? Well, I, I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's given you, like I said, uh, when, when I was talking to Christina, when we were getting ready for this, I said, if, if everybody learns one new thing, that's one more step down the road that we made. Uh, so if you have other ideas for other webinars that you'd like to see, I, I saw somebody make a recommendation that we, we should have a brainstorming about Easter Zoom. So I'll work on getting that set up. Uh, please send us anything that you need to know. You can, um, uh, email us. I'm going to put it in the chat right now, but you can email us at cfc at arumc.org. That goes to the whole communication staff. And so then we decide who is best to respond to that. 
So any questions that you have, any comments that you have, any any um, any needs that you have, please uh, send, let us know and we'll see what we can do. Thanks to Christina and her wonderful expertise uh, for sharing that with us. Um, thanks to her family for staying in place and not getting in the background. <laughs> um, and, yeah. um, and thanks to all of you so much for being present and we hope this has been helpful. We will get this cut in, a, in its fullness and put online, um, uh, at least I hope we will. Um, yeah, we will get this cut and put online, and then we will cut it up into bite-sized chunks to put on course so that, again, practice one thing at a time. Just add one step in at a time, and don't forget that you can you can ask your folks for help with this as well. So um, anyway, thank you all so much for being here. We'll stay on a few more minutes if anybody has any questions, but uh, thank you all for your patience, and we'll, we'll, we'll be in prayer for you and for your ministries, and, um, and we're here to help you in any way we can. So thanks.